My name is Gibran, and I'm here to talk about Islam, more specifically, Islamophobia. Now, I've been called a terrorist more times than I can count. So I came because I wanted to do something about it. I imagine a world where the word terrorist can be heard without immediately thinking of Islam. And how are we going to create this world, you might ask? We have to educate people about the true nature, the true meaning of Islam. I'm going to share with you a story about one of the first times I can remember being called a terrorist. I was in seventh grade on the bus coming home from school. I was tired, doing some homework or something. And then out of the blue, this kid asked me, hey, you're going to blow up a building? And so everyone around him laughed. And you know, I felt hurt and offended. This kid doesn't even know me. He's making generalizations about me based on my religion. I mean, I didn't provoke him or anything. I was just sitting, minding my own business. And he, he attacked me, I mean, not physically, but emotionally. And this, isn't, this was the first time, but it definitely wasn't the last. Ever since then, it's been going on. And so I think this is mainly because the media portrays Islam and Muslims as bad people. I mean, you can turn on the news at almost any given time and there'll be a terrorist attack and followed by like Islamic fundamentalist or Islamic ra radical. And it's just the media is exacerbating the situation by giving the impression that all Muslims are terrorists and all we want to do is, is blow up America. Uh, I remember many times when people would say, hey, is Osama bin Laden your uncle? Or do you have C4 in that backpack of yours? And you know, I would just shrug it off, mind my own business. But why do they say that? I mean, that's what I wanted to explore with you all. Why do they think that I'm a terrorist? Well, there's no denying the fact that a lot of terrorists are Muslim. However, I'm here to talk to you about why they're not actually followers of the same religion that I am. These terrorists, what they do is they morph Quranic verses to fit their own political agendas. They take them out of context to fit their own needs and their own political wants. They have a clash with Western culture, so what do they do? They use their religion as an excuse to kill hundreds of thousands of people. And the countries where they come from, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Afghanistan, they're all shown in a negative connotation on the news. And they're shown as being demeaning and being just full of conflict and violence. And they're always shown as having some problem or another. There's just constant turmoil there. And, you know, there is turmoil there, but a lot of people blame that on Islam and Sharia law. So, I mean, why is this? Do they think that they're accomplishing something? They think that they're following Quranic verses, but they're not. These countries, they're full, uh, a majority of the population is Muslim, but a lot of people just associate, oh, they have a big Muslim population, they must all be terrorists. Well, no, that's not correct. And a lot of people claim that Islam is a sexist religion because people would spray battery acid on girls' faces or beat their wives or not allow them to vote. I mean, a lot of people just think that Islam is a sexist religion that mitigates women and that women are inferior to men. I mean, it's true that in these country, in these sorts of countries, a lot of bad things do happen to women. And Saudi Arabia, for example, they can't vote, they can't drive, and they're just basically, in those countries, they're seen as inferior to men, and they claim that it's because of Islam. So why is the media portraying it like this? Why isn't something being done? Well, I believe it's because the mitigation of people like me, people, moderate Muslims, who are opposed to terrorism. I mean, there's a lot of people who just blindly assume Islam is a religion of violence and destruction. And these people, they go on the news shows, CNN, Fox News, they're always showing uh, someone who's speaking out against Islam. They're quoting the Quran, saying that, oh, this means that they hate all people, they hate all non-Islamic people. And, yeah, see, these people are all Muslim. I mean, none of these people are terrorists, right? You can probably recognize a few. So. There aren't enough moderate, moderate Muslims speaking out against extremism. However, there is enough of the converse to make a difference. I mean, look at these people. I mean, are these people going to kill you? No, they're not. Islam absolutely, completely disallows terrorism. Suicide, murder, theft, they're all not allowed in any way, shape, or form. 
I mean, my parents told me, you know, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. They told me all the same things that they told all of you as children. Islam is a religion of peace. I mean, we're just like you. We just happen to follow a different religion. And these countries that these terrorists come from, they're not all full of terrorists. I mean, yes, there might be a few. However, the few do not represent the whole of the country. I mean, Saudi Arabia, I've been there. I've been to Saudi Arabia, Turkey, the UAE, Bangladesh, all countries where Muslims make up a majority of the population. And I mean, they're just normal people going about their daily lives. I mean, you can't tell that this person would blow up a school or this person would do anything bad because they're all just normal people. And the women there, they're not, they're, yes, maybe they are oppressed there. However, Islam does not recommend, it's not condoned that you can do violence towards women. Prophet Muhammad, as it says, was a man of peace. The whole purpose of Islam is a peaceful religion where anybody from any ethnic background or anything can just join a religion where you're welcome. Even women. Women are very held in very high regard in Islam. They're seen as equal to men. They have the right to property, the right to vote, the right to uh, refuse a prospective husbands. They're allowed all the same rights that they have in America. However, the people in Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Afghanistan, they are oppressing them, and we don't know why. I mean, I'm not going to pretend to stand here and tell you why they're doing this, but that's not how Islam actually is. Once again, they're taking the verses out of context. And because the moderate Muslims aren't speaking out against this, the perpetuation of the stereotype is only going to be continued. I mean, as I stated, more and more people are just coming out against Islam they're saying this means this, and this condones violence. And people like me, moderate Muslims, make up the majority of the population. The majority of Muslims are not terrorists. They're just normal people going about their everyday lives. And they're having their religions taken from them by these terrorists. And these terrorists are using it as an excuse to justify killing thousands of people. So yes, there are a few terrorists that are Muslim. However, they do not in any way represent all of Islam. Every religion, every group, every ideology has its members that will take things too far, take things out of context to fit their own selfish agendas. And these people, they don't represent all of their political ideologies or all of their uh, religion. So why should, it be the, any of this, why should it be the same with Islam? Islam is a religion of peace, but people don't seem to see that because it's being obscured by all these terrorists and all these non-Muslims speaking out against Islam, they don't understand uh, Islam because they're afraid of it. So we need to unite against bigotry. I remember that one time in chemistry, I was with, uh, I was put into a group with a guy, we'll call him Bill for now, and he was very anti-Muslim. I remember him talking to one of his friends, he's like, oh, all Muslims are terrorists, all of them just want to kill America. And you know, I just kind of shrugged it off, you know, what could I say at that point? I didn't want to lecture him. So as fate would have it, we were put in the same chemistry table and we had to do experiments together. So you know, we started talking, you know, like how much acid should I put in here? Or what's the reading on the thermometer? And so eventually we started talking about non-school stuff and we became friends. So Bill and I, you know, we started hanging out and one day he said to me, you know, Gibran, I'm sorry. I know you're not a terrorist. And you know, I felt proud. Like, I felt like I made a difference. I didn't lecture him. I didn't say, you must believe this, you must believe that. All I did was lead by example. I represented my religion in this normal way I do. I didn't do anything different to him than I do to any other people. I just, you know, I talked to him, I was nice to him, because that's what Islam really is. It's the ability to accept others, even if they're not the same as you. And I felt accomplished. I felt like I did something good for my religion. So I'm not telling you that you have to research, spend hours poring over novels and uh, the internet looking for information about the true meaning of Islam. You know, no one wants to, no one wants to spend all of their time doing that unless they're like a scholar. But I am telling you, maybe be a little more open-minded. Maybe, you know, with information these days, you can Google Islam in like five seconds with your smartphones. So you can just do that, maybe see, you know, 
we're not all that bad. We're just normal people. So mitigation of moderate Muslim voices is a big problem in our community. It's a very relevant issue. So the best way to treat Islamophobia is through education, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting topic. Thank you. It sounds like it's quite a complex problem. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to hear why you think that Islam is portrayed so negatively. What do you think? Um, what do you think are some of the problems? I think it's a number of problems. Well, yes. Like what I think the problem is is that there's no central cult figure in Islam. There's no person that. Uh, takes care of all the discrepancies. Ah, so there's not one person that says it is this mm -hmm. way or this is how what we believe. So because of that, a lot of people can use their own definition because there's no one to regulate the actual like concrete definition. I see. Interesting. And what are some words of advice you have to give to give us? And um, whenever we have some sort of thought or think um, think about some of the things that you talked about, well, some of the negative connotations. Well, I would just like to tell you that or give you some advice that I mean everybody. And the whole world is not the same. But some of these people, uh, they're Muslims, they're not all the same as well. Some of them are more you know, passionate than others. And some of them you know, are more cruel than others. So you can't just take the one person and expect all the people like, to be that way. If one person commits a murder in America, not all Americans are murderers, right? So why should it be the same way with Muslims? Well put. Thank you. Thank you.